I mean, at the end of the day, the only throttling that book made me want to do is to throttle it across the room because of just how painful it was to read certain lines. Formula One, my freaking favorite sport ever. What's up, book babes? If you didn't know, well, this video is certainly gonna let you know that I am a huge, huge fan of Formula One. Formula One is a racing sport where each team has to create the perfect formula for the fastest, best car of the season. Each team has two drivers. They work as a team, but they're still competitors. And all season long, they're competing in these races to get as many points as possible for the championship. And at the end of the season, and they name the F1 champion. And I'm here to tell you that I love that sport so freaking much. And I finally treated myself to a little bit of merch, which we're gonna unbox today. And I'm just so excited to wear some F1 merch and show off how much I love the sport after so many years. I've posted about F1 a couple times now on my Instagram. And every single time I get DMs telling me, have you read Throttled? Have you read Throttled? You need to read Throttled. Throttled is the only F1 F1 romance out there and I gotta say with lines like I f like I race wild risky and often I'm pretty glad that we don't have a ton of F1 romances. I finally gave in and read it. So I'm gonna give you all the tea and my honest review about the book after we go through my F1 merch. I started off by getting merch of my favorite drivers, obviously. My two favorite drivers are Carlos Sainz and Lando Norris. Lando was still a rookie when I started following F1 back in 2019. And at the time he was driving with fellow racers, Carlos Sainz. So they were both driving for Team McLaren and they are like the ultimate brotherhood, team ship. We love them so much that they even have their own name. We call them Carlando. So I love Team Carlando so much, although I have to say Carlos Sainz still holds the number one seat for me, but those are my top two favorite drivers. Norris is currently still driving for McLaren and Sainz is now driving for Ferrari. He just signed with them recently. He finished a season with them. And as far as we know, he is contracted for the following season. So I'm super excited to see both of these drivers. They had some iconic races this last season and really showcase once more why we love them so much because despite them being on different teams they did strategize quite well for an amazing race this last season and ended up taking first and second position in that race. So the first piece of merch I bought actually showcases Lando. So this is a nice light desert pink actually and it's so funny because I'm not necessarily a huge pink fan. McLaren is famously known for its papaya color and I wanted something that showcase that. Now I love the graphic that the artist made for this hoodie. So I ended up going with them and tried to pick a color as close to a McLaren-ish color as possible so it would stand out and not just be another black hoodie or a white hoodie that could get dirty really easily. Check this out. So this is the back of the hoodie. I freaking love it. I love how it showcases one of Lando's favorite helmets, which is the basketball helmet. They are able to design and change up their helmet throughout the season. And of course his racing number which is four. I think it's so cool. It's super different. I don't love super giant graphics in the front so I tried picking something that would really be more on the back or the sleeves or something else and I just love that the front also has a little tiny four and I'll make sure to try it on so you let me know what you think. But honestly this hoodie is so soft. It is so cozy. It is super comfortable. I honestly ended up loving this artist so much. Every single piece of merch that you're seeing here today is actually made by an indie artist. I tried to support local and see, and I'm so impressed by the quality of the hoodie. I just love it so much. I already wore it a couple times because I was just so excited to finally have F1 merch. I always like my items to be a little bit more everyday wearable and not something that is super graphic-y or over the top. Moving on to the cutest merch ever, I actually ended up purchasing keychains. The seller actually included this super cute little card. I can tell right away that the artist is Team McLaren. This is Norris and Piastri. But what's really cute is that the seller actually wrote me a little note with my name on it. She actually wrote that she loves Carlos and Lando and they are one of her favorite duos. They are just such an iconic duo. Why wouldn't they be? Here's the packaging of the keychains. They are so cute, but just wait until I open them. Look at this. Oh my God. 
what I love this keychain because it's actually reversible. It's just kawaii. So here is the Lando Norris keychain. It is so adorable. It feels very him too because he was the youngest driver on the grid when he first started. I think he really took on this persona of just the young brother. And I just love how the keychain has this little star. This is the Carlos keychain. I love it so much. I feel like she even got his hair so right. If you follow the sport, there are a ton of inside jokes. Sometimes we even call F1 the meme sport because there's just so many memes that come out of this. And as a millennial, memes are everything. Look how cute. We have our iconic duo together. What do you guys think? Should I put them on my keys or should I put them and clip them over on my purse or a backpack or something? So yeah, shout out to that amazing artist who also included this iconic hat from the sport. It is a sticker. It is so cute. I loved their packaging so much. And now for my last piece of merch, because I got a hoodie for Lando Norris, I had to get a hoodie for Carlos Sainz since he is my favorite driver at the end of the day. I did have a bunch of issues with this hoodie because first it was immensely oversized. I don't love super huge and baggy hoodies, at least not for this crew neck. That's not how I wanted to wear it. I had to swap with the owner. So she finally swapped it for the small size. So we're gonna try it on. Now on the back, we actually have an iconic line, which is smooth operator. This is something that we actually call Carlos Sainz. If you follow along in the sport, you know exactly what this means. Anytime he does a really smooth maneuver or a win, he tends to go on the team radio while he's driving and sing smooth operator. Unfortunately, they were about to get sued for doing that because it is broadcasted live and he can't be singing a song he doesn't have the rights to. But we still call him smooth operator. And I just love this hoodie so much because it shows off the Ferrari race car. Let's try it on. Let's make sure I show you guys what this actually looks like. I apologize in advance for the super poor lighting. It is so gloomy outside and I don't have my light around me available to highlight this better. Oh, this this fit is so much better. I love it so much. This is so much better than the last hoodie where I was absolutely drowning. I have black jeans on so you won't be able to really see the cutoff but, but I gotta say it is so cute. It is a nice fit. I enjoy it. It's not overly baggy or anything like that. The other hoodie literally was just baggy all here and all on the side and all on the back and super long. It reached like my knees, <laughs> which is pretty funny because this is just a size down. So I can't believe one size makes such a big difference, but I love this smooth operator. I can officially say that I'm pretty happy with this hoodie. Now, let's try on the Norris hoodie. At this super cute desert pink, this one is larger. You can tell from the size that it is bigger, but it's such good quality that I'm not even mad about it. I really like the graphics so much. We love to stand our favorite Twitch streamer. This hoodie is honestly so comfortable. I just want to wear it all the time. We have our little four right here and it's just so comfy. I love it. Let me know which one you guys think look better, but I think for now, since I want some color, I think I'm going to go with my Lando Norris hoodie. By the way, if you're enjoying all these shenanigans, like the unboxings, the try-ons and the reviews, make sure you hit subscribed if you're not yet subscribed. All right. So moving on to this hot mess of an F1 romance throttled. It is actually a series, but thankfully we we do not follow the same couple for every single book. And I did hear that the series gets better and better book by book. So I'm really surprised because this first book wasn't as bad as I actually thought, but it's also probably because I've been exposed to more and more romance, doing all these different challenges and reading diverse genres. So I'm probably used to some of the occasional cringiness or cheesiness in these books. Now I have to preface this by saying that I had just finished reading House of Spirits, which is such a freaking heavy book. It was sincerely depressing and so dark and so real. And even though I loved the writing and the book, it was heavy. And so I was actually really happy to read something very light, very easy going, which I think is the point of a lot of these romance books. It's just to unplug, to have a great time, to have fun. There were still some insane lines in there that just made me, ooh. The book stars Noah Slate, an American F1 champion whose dad was also an F1 champion. So he's basically a legacy and he's 
your typical douche jerk guy who's just betting everybody and he always wants to win and be on top. I mean, of course, he's an F1 driver. He wants to win that championship. His biggest rival is actually this rookie named Santiago. And Santiago was recently signed to the same team. Not only is Santiago his rival, he is now his teammate. Our love interest is Maya and Maya is Santiago's sister. She just graduated. She doesn't know what she wants to do with her life, but big brother is there to spend the big bucks on her and let her work on a YouTube vlog. I know I can see the irony. She decides she's going to accompany Santiago, figure out her life. She's grateful to her brother, has a really close relationship with him and she's vlogging about F1 and all these racers behind the scenes. Now this book itself was so strange. I did not think I'd actually like Noah Slade as a character because he's a womanizer. He doesn't care. He uses women in his iconic and famously known routine and ritual before a race is to actually hook up with a bunch of women the night before and be all fresh in the morning. So ew, gross. You'd figure he'd give you the ick. But I was actually really surprised because the author Lauren Asher actually made RMC very dimensional and he's terrible but super hot. I mean just incredibly so hot that everyone just thirsts around him. On top of that he's this F1 driver. Of course there's gonna be all these women flocking around him but I was actually really surprised that he grew on me pretty quickly. And I was especially surprised that the character I couldn't stand was our female MC. She was just so bland, basic, boring, annoying. It was just so bad. And I actually did peek at other reviews and I was not the only one. For some reason, she just read off so one dimensional, so basic, and none of us understood why he was so in love with her. And at one point I wondered if it's really just her looks that he's into and believe it or not, that's the only thing he really commented on. Noah Slade's comments about Maya were always about her smile, about how he feels happy when he makes her laugh, just how our MC is starting to soften. But beyond that, there's nothing really else that Maya shows off to us. She was boring, unimpressive, moving on. Now our MC actually comes with some father issues and some mother issues. His mom really doesn't care about him at all except all the perks that she can give him like Formula One tickets for her and her friends. And he mentions this over and over and his dad is actually pretty abusive to Noah verbally and actually physically. Where it just didn't work for me was the fact that Noah overnight literally decided to randomly take therapy. There was no incentive, no motive other than he wanted to be better for Maya after half a date where they're both very aware that she's not the hookup type of girl and she wants something more long term and he realizes he does want that but there was no actual arc for that. There was no actual progress toward that. It was just Overnight, We love a man that takes therapy, but this is definitely a romance novel that felt so beyond the real world. And he came back a better and changed man and they lived happily ever after because something I learned this past year is that all romance novels have a happily ever after. Shout out to my romance reader friends for reminding me of that over and over. I'm just so used to heartbreak from all the fantasy and dark books that I read. What can I say in terms of realisticness to actual Formula One? Obviously, I don't know what it's like to date a Formula One champion. I would most definitely love to go to a race one day and see all of that live. The closest thing I've gotten to is actually seeing iconic racetracks in person out in Italy where this motorsport is super famous obviously because Ferrari is a long OG team and world champion. We love that team but I would love to go to an actual Formula One race. While reading this book it was actually really fun to see actual tracks, actual Grand Prix talked about in this book. So I really I love that. I thought that was super fun. Noah's actual narrative inside was just so unrealistic. Toward the end, there's a cheesy scene that I will not tell you guys, but upon reading it, I was like, this would be the most annoying and catastrophic F1 race ever if this actually happened during a race. But you know, it's a romance. It's for fun. Other inner monologues that Noah Slade had during a race just felt so unrealistic. I am obviously not an F1 racer, but I have seen enough interviews and heard enough of what they can actually hear and see and how they experience racing to know that no he's not looking at the crowd while he's going 200 miles per hour and he's not glancing around for certain people to be there that just made no sense but Lauren Asher really 
really did talk about team radio and strategy and the way that they're prepping and practicing and trying out all these different things to make sure that they actually win the championship. Now the fandom itself, and I'm talking about people that like this Dirty Air series, that is what the series is called. They also made fun of the fact that our love interest is a YouTuber or a vlogger. And this is because oftentimes real life F1 racers do tend to date journalists or press people. So it was actually pretty funny to see that continue on here. And it was a teammate's sister nonetheless. So that was also pretty realistic in that sense. But you know what? At the end of the day, this was an easy, fun read. People keep telling me that I should just push on and move forward. So let me know if you think I should read book two, which is Collided. And I believe Collided focuses on an F1 racer that we meet in Throttled, but he is supposed to be even worse than Noah Slade in terms of being a womanizer and an absolute jerk. So that would be pretty fun to read and see where it ends up. I feel like I would have given this book three stars overall because it's fun, it's whatever, it's easy breezy. Up until the end, again, I'm not gonna ruin it for you, but that ending was just way too over the top. And to be quite honest with you, I completely thought they were gonna break up. Like sincerely, I thought that was where this was going because again, I forget that romance has happily ever after. And also just the way they were talking and communicate, it was just, ugh. So what does this say about my rec? Well, I definitely recommend you watch the sport and get into F1, not necessarily into F1 romance. <laughs> but this does seem like a fun, silly read and it's the only F1 romance book out there. I feel like I should try it. I feel like I should continue and see what the fuss is all about. I love my F1 merch. We'll see if I continue this F1 romance. Make sure you hit that like button. Comment your favorite piece of merch. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye! So dark in here, I am so sorry for the bad lighting.